Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we're going to talk about what do you find do if you find a injured turtle? Okay, now we're going to go a little bit deeper into this uh, than what we have kind of in the past. But before we get into that, right there in the bottom right hand corner of your device will be our subscriber watermark. Make sure you hit that. If you're on your cell phone, go ahead and widen that up to the full screen there and you'll see that subscriber button right at the bottom. Now, let's get right into this. First, I have to give this disclaimer. Uh, you must do your best you can to try and find a rehabber or a veterinary practice or somebody that can take the turtle in if it's injured uh, first. But in the event that the injury is not bad, small crack or just a small uh, small chip missing from the shell, small crack in the shell, something where uh, very little blood, very uh, no meat at all, nothing sticking out, nothing protruding from the shell, then you cannot find anybody that's close to you or you've called your Department of Natural Resources, Wildlife Commission, your Fish and Game Office, whatever they're called for your state. What do you do to help the little guy? Okay. Well, we have a box turtle here today. Okay. And the first thing I'll show you is right here right there you can see on the bottom of the plastron that long crack okay it's just a crack it's not an actual full break it's not uh, a big chunk missing it's not been crushed and it's like looking like at puzzle pieces trying to piece it back together it's just a simple crack this happens a lot of times uh, from of course uh, could be hit by a car most primarily uh, by a tractor or a lawnmower could have gotten, been gotten a hold of by a dog. Uh, any number of things, something fell on it, and any number of things can cause a small crack. Okay? Now, again, the disclaimer is don't try and deal with it yourself if, if possible, but if you have no access to anybody and vets that's around you want to charge you money to see a wild animal, you know, to see something like this, uh, that really pisses me off more than just about anything when it comes to veterinary practices. And that's a laundry list of things that irritate me about veterinary practices. But that's one of them. And not everything has to, has to be about the money. And a lot of your course practices are all about the money, uh, just like the healthcare field. But in the event that you cannot find somebody that's not going to charge, of which they should not for native species, they should, they should just be more than willing to just help out the native species, because nine times out of ten something like this is not that big of a deal. Would not cost that much, doesn't cost hardly any product, doesn't cost hardly any amount of time uh, and supplies to deal with something like this. But with that being said, now what do you do when you don't have access to anybody or easy access and it's just a simple break? If it was a major damage to the animal, then yes, find somebody to take it to, even if you drop it off on somebody's doorstep. Uh, you know, I mean, it would be better for it to have professional help than nothing at all. Uh, there are... Uh, you may have to drive several counties over if it was a major, major issue when it comes to the animals. But like I said, this is not going to be one of those that's telling you, yes, just go out and find every turtle you can find and, and try and rehab them. No. Most states have laws against that if you're not a licensed rehabber. However, if you don't have easy access, or in the case of like uh, some states, have very few rehabbers licensed by the state for reptiles specifically because very few people really care about reptiles. Now, so let's say what happens when you have a turtle you come across it and I'll have Sebastian kind of come up a little bit closer on this right here with the camera I have him zoom in right there with this get it nice and clear when there's just a simple crack like this right here not so often that it's on the plaster and more often than not it's on the carapace you see the cracks going across the carapace crossways long ways uh, side to side this is where the cracks tend to happen more. But in the case of something like this, and you just have a simple crack, how do you deal with it? If you can't really find anybody that's quick and convenient, that just can give you, just you can take and, and, and drop it off to them, and they take care of the problem. All right, let's start here. These kind of cracks are very, very simple, okay? The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're doing either betadine or peroxide, 
with an antibiotic ointment after the fact, okay? You can take and pour the peroxide or the betadine directly on the shell itself. You can apply it by Q-tip. You can do it however you want to do that. Uh, when you do the betadine, you would do it to more of a medium to a weak tea color. Uh, you don't have to do it full strength. You don't have to do just the uh, the burgundy color right out of the right out of the container. However, with the peroxide, you can take and just pour it right on there just to make sure not to get it around the mouth, the eyes, and things like that for obvious reasons. We do treat with peroxide around mouths and things like that, but it's done in more of a controlled setting to where they can't swallow it. Man, we're not, but we're not talking about that at this specific time. Take your peroxide, take your betadine, your iodine, treat it with that, dry the surface off once you're done with it and then take and put your antibiotic ointment on after the fact. Now, there's a couple of things you can do if you're trying to keep it, and you're obviously I'm gonna to have to talk about how do you keep them, because when you have a crack like this, you need to keep them for several days, okay? Because you don't wanna just do one treatment, take it out and release it, let it go. Especially in the middle of the summertime, you don't wanna to have to deal with that kind of issue, because with that being said, the flies will lay larvae on the turtles and then you have to deal with that issue as well. And the maggots will not stop. Maggots are great for cleaning out infection, but they will not stop. We've had turtles brought into us that were so eaten by uh, maggots that all, most of their internal organs were eaten up and they were still living. They were just being eaten alive, okay? You don't wanna see that happen. You don't wanna have that happen. So with that being said, you don't wanna release them too early. Now, you have to know where the animal come from. If you know exactly where the turtle come from, that's exactly where it has to go back to. I know it's kind of a catch-22 uh, as far as box turtles goes. Now aquatic turtles you can release them pretty much in any pond, stream, lake, whatever. But when it comes to the eastern box turtles or box turtles in general, you have to take them back to the territory that you got them from. Again, I know it's a catch-22, that's where they got hit from. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to take it back where it got hit. However, you cannot re-release them just anywhere that might be convenient or look like it would be a great place for them because they have a homing beacon built inside of them that will take them back to their original area, which will be even more roads that they'll cross and more danger that they end up becoming uh, involved in on. Okay, now. With that being said, let's talk about just the treating first. We'll talk about how to keep them and just uh, as far as temporarily keeping them to keep them the best. If you're going to keep them on some kind of a natural bedding, mulch, leaf litter, things that they would find in the wild, then you're going to have to put a little bandage around it obviously. Because if it's on the plastron, like for this little guy right here, it's on his belly scales. If we take and we apply antibiotic ointment and we just start putting him in loose leaf litter or bedding, then he's going to have that adhere to the belly because of the oily residue that the antibiotic ointment or the, uh, the topical ointment is going to have on the shell. Now, with that being said, you want to, as best as you can, if you're going to keep him on a bedding, you wrap it up with a bandage, just like you would any open wound, okay? And But you need to be done at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day, if you want to kind of help with the process a little bit more. These guys are not going to be huge fans of the handling, so don't worry about that. Uh, you'll have to make sure that where you put it, you put it right across in between here to where they can't get their feet back up under there and actually scratch that bandage off. Uh, and that's only if you're keeping them on bedding. If you want to keep them just in a, in a container, with no bedding at all, no big deal. You don't have to do any kind of a bandage. Uh, it'll allow it to heal a little bit faster because there's no bandage there. It gets natural air, but you're keeping the antibiotic ointment on there, which will also keep flies and maggots away. You need to do that two to three times a day for about seven to 10 days. After about seven to 10 days, the wound itself will be starting to close off. It'll be starting to scab up and heal up. At the time that it's starting to heal up, you can go ahead and take and release the animal. The animal, it will heal up on its own. These animals survive in the wild being, eat, being hit with cracks and things like that, and they do just fine and never being seen or found. We'll come across turtles in the wild, and other people come across turtles in the wild that will actually run across them where you can see visible injuries and where those injuries have healed up and they did it just on their own okay so what we're trying to do is just give them a helping hand and a helping start to keeping from any bad bacteria or any foreign body matter just creating any bacterial infections with inside of that wound now as far as keeping them Guaranteed, it's highly unlikely they're gonna eat within the first few days of captivity. Stress alone just from you working on them and keeping them in captivity is probably gonna keep them from eating. However, keep a water dish handy at all times. That way they can have water or access to water, okay? Some form of a low water dish that they can stick their head in. Yes, there's a good chance they're gonna climb in it. These guys absolutely love to swim. The box turtles do. They're not a, an aquatic turtle, but they love swimming and they're good at it, even though they don't have webbed feet. 
So as far as food goes, you can offer food. Things that they're most attracted to, especially is movement, uh, earthworms, things like that, slugs, snails. Uh, you can do that. Yes, they are big time fruits and vegetable eaters, but they like the movement. And a lot of the times they won't eat the fruits and veggies in captivity right out of the gate as fast as they will something that's moving like a prey item, okay, like a bug or a worm. So keeping them warm is going to be essentially key. Uh, anywhere in the low to mid 80s is fine because you're not, you're not keeping the animals. So you don't have to set up a habitat with the mid 90s and the low 80s and the daytime nighttime cycles and all this other stuff. We're talking a very short period of time to just allow this to heal enough that it has a good helping start and then you can take it back out and release it into the wild and just let it go about doing what it did naturally. Okay. So food, try offering food. Don't be surprised if it doesn't eat. Offer water at all times. That way it doesn't become dehydrated. It can stay hydrated and then doesn't have to deal with the issues of rehydrating itself when you put it back out in the wild. Quiet and dark and warm is a great thing for at least a few days because it's dark a lot of the times when it comes to especially really, really stormy areas. Yes, there is still some light, but they will stay burrowed in burrows for extended periods of time uh, during times of the year anyways. So a little bit of a few days in the dark is not going to hurt them. The key thing is warm, dark, and quiet to keep them as stress-free as possible. Okay. Now, this is an overview of just how to help take care of an injured turtle that maybe you have found in the wild and you can't find anybody quickly that can give you a helping hand, you can always give us a call. We take these kind of phone calls all the time from all over the country. You're certainly welcome to give us a call. We're happy to try and help walk you through just a very short-term process and even help find you somebody that's close to you to where you can drop it off to a more experienced rehabber or medical professional in the industry. But in the event that you don't, and you don't have access to that, um, or you're out somewhere and you don't have access to the internet. Maybe you found one in the wild on a vacation and there's just not that great of access in the mountains or whatever the case may be. It doesn't happen all that often anymore, but so be it, and that be the case. This is what you want to do to kind of give it a helping hand. If you're on vacation, yeah, we understand you're not going to keep it in captivity for very long. You would just do this process as best you can for as long as you can and then just take it and let it go wherever, wherever you found it, okay? Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. This is what do you do to help an injured box turtle or turtle in general? What do you do when you find an injured turtle that's not too terribly bad off and you cannot find quick, adequate help? Or help is multiple counties away or a good several hours away. And it's just not so bad that it needs to get in to a veterinary or medical professional for dire emergency reasons. All right. Now, we appreciate you following along. Make sure to comment, leave us a message. Feel free to write us in and let us know of other things you want us to film about. We appreciate you following along week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us, as previously stated, for any kind of help with their animals, with their, their reptiles. We look forward to seeing you again. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.